Hey guys, how is it going? Happy New Year's Eve. We are here on the very last day of December, the very last day of 2019, and the very last day of the 2010s. Where did the last decade go? I mean, it has been a whirlwind, but you know what? I'm super pumped and excited for 2020 and the brand new decade that is to come. And I thought because I'm wrapping up my Madonna discography journey that I need to start a new one. I only have one more Madonna album to listen to, and that is 2015's Rebel Heart, her 14th studio album. And once I'm done listening to that record, I'm done my Madonna discography journey. And it's very bittersweet, but I have a lot more Madonna to come. I will be watching all her music videos for the very first time, and then I will be moving on to watching her concerts for the very first time, and then her live performances from award shows and such. I mean, I have lots of Madonna plan that will last me the next few years on this channel, so... It's gonna be a lot of Madonna, but you know what? I'm still super pumped and excited to dig into all those other aspects of Madonna. Here we are with Janet Jackson. A lot of you recommended that I should listen to some of Janet's albums, and I thought, you know what? Why not just go on a Janet Jackson discography journey, just like I did with Madonna. So here we are at her debut record from 1982. She was only 16 years old when she recorded this album. I mean, dear God. Um, there are only eight tracks on this record. And to be honest with you guys, I haven't heard many Janet Jackson songs ever in my life. There's only a handful. Together Again, All For You, Scream, the collaboration she did with her brother, and uh, Burn It Up from her most recent record from 2015, I believe. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a little embarrassing. So I'm super pumped to get into this Janet Jackson discography journey. So enough talking. Let's get into it. I'm super pumped. I'm so ready. Track number one, Say You Do. Let's get into it. However, before we get into track number one, I just want to point out that there are so many discography journeys that I want to go on that I've been wanting to for the longest time. I want to go on my Elton John journey, Rod Stewart. I want to go on a Mariah Carey journey, David Bowie. I mean, there's so many albums and I imagine so many great songs that I just haven't listened to before. So if you guys have any ideas of other journeys I should be going on from different artists from any decade, I'm open to anything. So just leave a comment and let me know. So now let's get to track number one, Say You Do. Okay, so that was track number one, Say You Do. And I gotta say, I really enjoy that song. And there isn't much actual singing in this song. It's just prolonged moments of instruments and synths and what have you. But you know what? I loved it. All I'm doing is sitting here and kind of just bouncing up and down my yoga ball and kind of just moving my body. And 
I'm already overheated, I'm already exhausted, I'm already sweaty, and it's only track number one, and I love this song so much. It's very, it's clearly, you know, if I didn't know this track was from the 80s, I would have known it was from the 80s. It has that very early 80s vibe, it sounds very disco-ish, it has that, you know, it's kind of, it kind of takes me back to Madonna's self-titled debut record from 1983 and there I haven't listened to much 80s music before this is why I'm kind of going on these music journeys to kind of familiarize myself with different genres from different decades but I love music from this time period total bop track number one say you do I loved it so much I love I don't know there's just so many different elements to this song I love I love all the different synths and I love all the different sounds in this song I mean I, I love it so much and I've I'm so happy I chose Janet Jackson as my next discography journey. I'm so excited. Okay. So now let's move on to track number two. You'll never find a love like mine. Okay, so that was track number two, You'll Never Find a Love Like Mine. This was another track that I absolutely adored. A lot of fun. Again, it was getting my body moving, my blood pumping, and I love the instruments and the synths in these songs so far. When it comes to the actual lyrics, I do enjoy the lyrics, I enjoy the melodies, but it's the instruments and the production of these songs that I'm really digging. I'm just having so much fun listening to these tracks so far. They're just putting me in a happy mood, as you can see. I'm just having a lot of fun, and oh. Let's get to track number three, Young Love. Okay, so that was track number three, Young Love, and this was another song I enjoyed. I didn't enjoy it as much as the first two tracks. I just found this song a little repetitive, and I was a little bored halfway through. I will listen to it again. I did enjoy it. I liked the lyrics to an extent. Again, I liked the production of the song. I just thought it was a little boring and repetitive, but that's just my opinion. So now let's move on to track number four, Love and My Best Friend. i 
Okay, so that was track number four, Love and My Best Friend. <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm just gonna be honest and say that I'm not the biggest fan of 80s ballads. There aren't very many 80s ballads that I actually enjoy. I find a lot of them actually quite boring. Maybe that's just a testament to that I haven't listened to a lot of 80s music before. I've only listened to a handful of records from the 80s, so... I definitely need to broaden my horizons when it comes to 80s music, but I just, I'm not a fan of 80s ballads for some reason. I just find them very mediocre and boring, and they always just put me to sleep. This song, unfortunately, is no exception. I mean, it's to me a very, very boring song, and I did not care for it at all. There's nothing memorable about it. I'm so sorry if you're a Janet Jackson fan and you love this record, but to me, this song was just very, very boring. There's nothing memorable. It's a sweet song, loving my best friend. I mean, the lyrics are nice, but that's about it. I feel like 90s was the peak for ballads and power ballads in particular. Whitney and Celine, and we had Shania and Mariah and all that. A whole bunch of others I can't think of right now, but... 80s ballads, I just, I have never really been a fan of. Anyway, let's move on to track number five, Don't Mess Up This Good Thing. Okay, so it's track number five, Don't Mess Up This Good Thing, and I feel like it's too late for that. <laughs> it's slowly going downhill for me, and this was another track I didn't care for, unfortunately. I didn't think it was very memorable. I thought it was quite boring, and I mean, it's... There's just nothing memorable about this song, unfortunately. I didn't care for it at all. I mean, I like the production on it. I just feel like it's a very generic 80s song. Um, and... Yeah, this song gets a thumbs down for me, unfortunately. So now let's move on to track number six, Forever Yours. Okay, and that was track number six, Forever 
yours. I did say at the beginning of this video that it is New Year's Eve and I don't want to fall asleep just yet because I had my whole night ahead of me and that is what that song was doing. It was putting me to sleep. I'm so sorry Janet Jackson but this song it, it's probably my least favorite on the record. It, I feel like this song is the epitome of not being memorable. The lyrics are very generic. I almost want to laugh at a couple of them. You are the breath inside of me, and if the ocean ran dry, don't you know, baby, that you could count on me? I mean, definitely my least favorite track on the record. It's very sleepy. It's very boring. To me, this is the type of song they play in elevators, or you're put on hold on the customer service line over the phone, and they play some random generic song, and this song pops up. I mean... I don't mean to sound cruel or anything, but it's just my opinion. To me, my least favorite track on the record. Anyway, let's move on to track number seven, The Magic Is Working. <laughs> Alright, and that was track number seven, The Magic Is Working, and unfortunately, there was zero magic there. This was another song I did not care for at all. I didn't dislike it as much as some of the prior tracks I already listened to, but I don't see myself going back to this track. Again, the lyrics, I mean, I had to roll my eyes at some of the lyrics, fireworks in every kiss, feel so good, I feel alive, I mean, whatever. I'm a little disappointed in this record so far, I will be real with you guys. So, I mean, it is what it is. This is Janet's debut record, so it's not like I'm expecting something iconic and super amazing. I just, I don't know. To me, it's just a very generic 80s pop record. Something that Kylie Minogue would have released. They all have this particular sound, and they all kind of sound alike. It's hard to kind of differentiate them. Anyway, let's move on to track number eight. Come give your love to me. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, that was the final track on the record. Give your love to me, and I'm gonna be honest, I mean, this is probably one of the most boring songs I've ever listened to in my life. Talk about not being memorable. I mean, it was so lazy. I mean, it was just kept going on and on and on, and there was nothing interesting about that song. It was just noise. It's just like, you know, in the Peanuts TV show and like the Peanuts movies where the teacher is talking and it's always like wah 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 or like any adult is talking wah 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 wah. It's kind of like what I was experiencing with this song. It was just like. Wah, 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 wah. It was just like, it was just noise, and it, it's just, it was very boring. I just wanted it to end. I, I don't even know why this was included on the record. There's nothing memorable about this song. And that is that. That was Janet Jackson's debut record from 1982. I did not care for this record at all, as I just told you throughout this first listen video. There were a lot of misses in my opinion. The only tracks I really liked on here was track number one and two, Say You Do and You'll Never Find a Love Like Mine. I kind of liked Young Love, but that's about it. The rest of the tracks, four through eight, were just filler, and there was nothing memorable about them, and... I have to give this record two thumbs down, which sucks because I don't want to do that, but I'm going to be real with you guys, I'm going to be honest with you guys, and this was just a very boring, lackluster record. Which was tragic, because you saw at the beginning of this record where I listened to Say You Do, and you'll never find a love like mine, I was so happy, I was so energized, I was so excited, and it quickly went downhill, so... Though I feel like this album was a bust, I'm still looking forward to listening to the rest of her discography. I know that it's gonna get better, it's gonna get a lot better, and that's often the case with some artists I've listened to in the past where their first couple records, their first few records aren't the greatest, but then they progressively get better. So as they mature and become more experienced in their craft, they tend to get better. So I have no doubt that Janet Jackson's discography will progressively get better and become iconic in its own right. So that is that. That is Janet Jackson's debut record from 1982. What did you think of the record? What are the highlights for you? If any, what did you not like about the record? Did you love it unlike myself? Why did you love it so much? And what are you excited to hear from Janet in the coming albums and the coming decades? I imagine if you're watching this, you probably listened to her whole discography already. So... What are some things that I should be excited about uh, when it comes to Janet's discography through the 80s and 90s and 2000s? What do I have to look forward to? And what are some surprises that I should get ready for? So leave your input, leave your comments. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter, you can message me. And yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.